Rules for chemical formula molecular compounds. Now exactly how the molecular compounds formula are written is something which we're going to see a bit later. But as of now, let's understand that when you write the chemical formulas of a molecular compound, how are various molecular compounds or basically the elements comprised in this are written. So each of the molecular compound will basically comprise of two non-metals, non-metal 1 and non-metal 2. Now there is a concept which is called electronegativity. of an element right what this basically means is that you know uh, we know that whatever an atom of an element is there it pulls towards its self some shared bonds okay this ability of a atom of a particular element to pull shared bonds towards it is different for different kind of atoms right depending on which atom this is right so let's say for example if you are a carbon atom then this ability is something like 2.5 whereas if you are a hydrogen atom then this is 2.1 now depending on whether or not this electronegativity is lesser or higher we decide whether the name of this metal. So whenever a molecular compound is formed, it is formed through two non-metals, right? Let's say, for example, we take an example of hydrogen. It has an electronegativity of one. And carbon has 2.5, right? So in such a case, we say that hydrogen has less electronegativity while carbon has high electronegativity. So if we are looking at any kind of a compound which comprises of these two, okay, and without getting it whether it's, it's kind of possible or not, the one with the lesser high electronegativity, which is hydrogen, is going to be prefixed first. And the one with the higher electronegativity is going to be put in afterwards. So if we are looking at the formula of a compound, okay, looking at a chemical formula, so in that case, if any of the two non-metals who are reacting together, who are coming together, then the one which has a lesser electronegativity is going to have its name first, whereas the one with the higher electronegativity is going to have the name second. We talk about hydrogen chloride. This is a compound which is formed of two non-metals, okay, hydrogen and chlorine. Right. Again, there's a reaction of two non-metals. In these cases, the electronegativity of hydrogen is equal to 2.1, whereas for chlorine, the electronegativity is equal to 3. So what did we do? We picked up the one with the lesser electronegativity and put it on the left side. So if I were to write the formula, I will put in H first, which is the formula of hydrogen. Chlorine is Cl, right? So chlorine is going to be put in here, second. And again, just like we spoke about iron, when we write the compound formula, towards the end, we add the word IDE. So we say hydrogen chloride and not hydrogen chlorine, right? Similarly, let's say, for example, if I were to talk about hydrogen sulfide, again, this is also a molecular compound. Hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1. Sulfide, again, IDE is what we've used towards the end, right? And sulfur is more electronegative than hydrogen, and therefore it's put on the right-hand side. One more rule that you, want, you must know, you know, when you're writing these formula is that whenever there are more than one atom, so whenever there are more than one atoms of an element in a molecular compound, okay? So the most common example for this is, what is this? Do you remember this? This is what is called carbon dioxide. Right? So in this case, basically, there are 
two atoms of oxygen right in this case if you see i just wrote hydrogen sulfide right but in case of these compounds you know what happens is that let's say for example there are two atoms of oxygen so i've used the word carbon dioxide di means what two as against this if i had co wherein only one atom of oxygen was there i would have used the word carbon mono oxide mono means what mono means one right let me give you another example what about if we have three of them right so let's say we talk about phosphorus trichloride now this basically is written as pcl3 so there are three atoms of chlorine which are there so instead of chlorine i have written chloride as i told you we pre, uh, put in ide right but before this i have put in the word tri indicating that there are three atoms of chlorine right now you must be wondering that you know why is it that we put in these words mono di tri and why is it that in case of hydrogen sulfide i did not use the word mono right this question might be there in your mind so let me just clarify this what happens is that two or more elements can actually combine together to form more than one compound right let's say for example if uh, the most common example which is given in this case is let's say for example if you talk about nitrogen and oxygen taken together they can form nitrogen monoxide written as no it can be nitrogen dioxide right no2 it can, whenever these things are there in order to differentiate between the number of molecules we use the word mono and di whereas if i look at about this hydrogen sulfide thing okay in this case hydrogen and sulfur together can form only one compound which is hydrogen sulfide and therefore there is no use to no point actually to write the word mono over here right hope you would have understood this video thank you for being with us today